Hi there, my name is Heath Hyatt. I'm the teaching pastor at Church of the Heartland, and I think today's message is really going to help you. I know even in preparation for this message, it's really got a lot of things into my own heart, and hopefully that transfers uh, into your heart today as well. Let's open with the word of prayer. Lord Jesus, thank you for this time. Lord, I pray that you give us ears to hear your spirit, what you want to have said today. Lord, and you give us eyes to see what you're doing in our lives, and you give us hearts that are open to hear exactly and, and, and impart into our hearts exactly what you want for us in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's start with our first slide here. So that's how those terrible storms got their name. I don't know. I, there was definitely information in that opener that I didn't know uh, how those storms were made, uh, named. I didn't, I didn't know all that. And imagine if Misty, she's a meteorologist, and she comes home and says, Hey, honey, there is this huge storm. It's going to kill a lot of people. It's going to do a whole lot of financial damage. It's going to, be, uh, it's going to ruin places for, for years to come. And the effects of this storm is going to remain for a long time. And it really reminded me of you, Heath. I named it Hurricane Heath. Oh, well, gee, thanks. That's great. Praise the Lord. Uh, just what I always wanted to be known for. You guys remember Hurricane Katrina in 2005? Well, at, th at that time, in the year 2005, there were 1,326 babies that were named Katrina at that time. Well, guess what? Katrina hits a terrible hurricane with all kinds of damage, and people lost their lives. And since Hurricane Katrina happened, there are now less than 200 babies named Katrina every year. And if you were named Katrina before 2005, could you imagine how difficult that would be for you? I'm sure if your name is Katrina, you, you, you better not have an angry outburst at work. Because if you have an angry outburst at work, you know all those people are going to be like, ooh, Hurricane Katrina, there she goes, storming out of the room. Right? You wouldn't, you would, you wouldn't be allowed to have any kind of anger issues whatsoever in your life uh, because you know you're going to be nicknamed Hurricane Katrina. So, hey, for you and I, maybe you're going through a storm in your life right now as well. Maybe it's a financial storm and you don't have the money that you need to pay your bills. Maybe there's a health diagnosis in your life and it's troubling and it's, you feel like you're in a storm right now trying to overcome uh, this health situation. Or maybe your children or grandchildren aren't acting in the way they're supposed to act and they're not going the direction they're supposed to go and they're not listening to God or to anybody else. Or maybe you have a friend going through a hard time or maybe you lost someone that's near to you and the grief, the waves of grief are rolling over your life and it just continues to bother you and, and you just can't seem to get over that grief. Maybe you've got an addiction, maybe to alcohol or drugs or pornography or, or something else or pain pills and this addiction just keeps haunting you and it's, it creates these storms in your life. Or maybe you've got depression. Those dark clouds have arrived, and they just won't seem to go away, and you just can't seem to get over it, and you're in the storm of depression. Well, today we're talking about what to do when your life 
is in a storm. When the storms of life come your way. And we're in an eight-week, we're in a sermon series, it's a 20-week sermon series, this is week number eight, called Closer to Jesus. And in this sermon series, we are looking at the life of Jesus, and we're looking at specifically the Gospel of John. And we're going systematically, just chapter by chapter, and story by story, through the Gospel of John, and we're seeing how Jesus dealt with things. Because I'll tell you, when you're, when you're going through the storms of life, you're going to need Jesus. And you know, uh, so we're going to look at a very famous Bible story here from Uh, John chapter 6, where Jesus is walking on water. John chapter 6, we'll start in verse 16. That evening, Jesus' disciples went down to the shore to wait for him. And as the darkness fell, and Jesus still hadn't come back, they got into the boat and headed across the, the lake towards Capernaum. Soon, a gale swept down upon them, and the sea grew very rough. And they had rode three or four miles when suddenly they saw Jesus walking on the water toward the boat. And they were terrified. So he called out to them. Jesus called out to them, don't be afraid. I am here. And then they were eager to let him in the boat. And immediately they arrived at their destination. As soon as Jesus was in the boat, they arrived at their destination. So we all need peace in our storms, guys. We all are in desperate need of some peace right now. With the way our world is, with the way every situation we just find ourselves in is, where does that peace come from? Where can we find peace in the type of life that we find ourselves in right now? Well, our next slide, peace isn't uh, found in the absence of a storm. Peace is found in the presence of Jesus. We think that True peace is found when our storms are finally over. If we can just finally get past all those storms, then we would have real peace. But peace is not found when there's no storms. Peace is found when we have Jesus. And here's how life works, and my wife and I were talking about this. It seems like in our minds we always think, if I can just get past, I don't know, this event, you know, my, my kid's got a program and I need, uh, it's really busy till I get past that. It just always seems like there's something else right around the next corner. And as soon as you get past this one, you find yourself with another one and another one and another one. There's always something around the next corner. There's always a storm of life kind of waiting around after you get past this one. And what she and I were talking about was how important it is that we instead just take peace into our lives now and everywhere we go is peace. Like Psalms 23 says, even though there's uh, the valley of the shadow of death and there's enemies everywhere, we are beside the still waters. We got Jesus in our life. The shepherd is guarding over us. So it's not about having less storms in our lives. It's about having Jesus with us in this bubble of peace everywhere we go. We realize that Jesus is holding our hands in these dark times. It changes how we go through things. When you're going through a tough time, but you're holding on to Jesus' hand, it really does change how you go through them. We no longer uh, go through them without hope, and we no longer um, lack the inner strength we need to make it through. It's like just holding Jesus' hand through every one of those situations just starts to make it okay. It's going to be all right. There's peace that passes all understanding. We are holding the hand of the Prince of Peace, and it's going to be okay in this storm. Now, Following Jesus, let's be clear, it doesn't mean that bad days won't happen. When you're following Jesus, it doesn't mean that you'll never have a bad day, that you'll never have a storm. No, you're going to have storms. It just means that the Prince of Peace is going to be with us in those storms. It means that Jesus is right there beside us, making sure that everything will be okay. Those disciples knew that if they had Jesus with them, it's going to be okay. There's nothing that's going to happen to Jesus. And so if we're with him, we're going to be all right as well. As long as Jesus is in your boat, your boat's not going down. And he was going to make sure that they made it to the other side. Okay, so our next slide. Jesus wants to be our captain. And I love this picture here. You've got Jesus just leading the way there to the lighthouse, to the, to the safety in the storm, outside of the storm. And this world we live in is very, very confusing. And There are so many things that are now pulling us in so many different directions, and we are going to need Jesus to show us what direction to go. 
We need his input. We need his navigation. See, Jesus knows everything there is to know. And we, he knows what we're going to be going through. He knows what we are going through. He knows what rocks are there. He knows what, where the storm is at. He knows all of those things. And we need to learn to trust his guidance in the middle of these storms. He wants to navigate us and captain us through these storms. And I don't know about you, but how many times have we made a decision on our own and we didn't pray about it, we didn't ask God which way to go, and that decision it just turned out to be really, really terrible. <laughs> Not good at all. I know that's the case for me many times. I, I've been like, I'm just going to do this, and I don't need to ask God, and I'm just going to take a step. And boy, those times never work out well. Because Jesus knows what's ahead for me. He knows what's around those corners. And he really wants to get, put input into my life because, because he wants to help me avoid all of those other obstacles. And then after I make those decisions where I don't listen to Jesus and I just go ahead and make them, then I come humbly back to him with my tail between my legs and I'm just like, oh, Jesus, you've got to help me. And he's like, okay, I'll help you. And he puts things back, he puts me back on course, and he helps to fix the mess that I found myself in. And all of that, though, all of that regret, all of that embarrassment could have been avoided if I would have just listened to Jesus the first time, if I'd have just prayed about every decision. And if you're like me, you've always, you've, you've at certain times tried to tell Jesus what you're going to do, and then expect him to bless your path and your direction and, and jesus just is like no i'm not doing that that's not how it works only his path is blessed and many times i've just tried to take a step on my own and then said all right jesus bless me now and and of course it doesn't work like that why because we've got to be going his direction he's the captain of the boat instead of just informing jesus which way we're going we need to ask his uh, ask him to help us navigate and help us the, the, the right direction that we need to go. See, guys, this is not Jesus' first storm, right? He has helped many disciples for 2,000 years. He's helped them through various storms. It's not his first storm. So we got to trust him that he's steering us the right direction, that he knows the way to go, and that there's a reason for the direction that he's taken our life. And if you look at verse 21 there, it says, they were eager to let him in the boat, and when they did, they immediately arrived at their destination. I love that, immediately arrived. You know, as soon as we let Jesus in the boat, uh, we're going to get to where we're supposed to be. As soon as we put Jesus, he's, a, he's the, the X factor. As soon as you put Jesus in the situation, everything begins to turn out the way it's supposed to be. And when we let him on the boat and give him control, he's going to get us to where he wants us to be. Our next slide here, it might be time to throw some stuff overboard. Might be time. So when you're in a storm out on the water, what is essential takes on a totally different, uh, totally different feel, right? In those essential times, you know, what, you, you need what's there to survive. It's not about diamond rings and stuff like that. Those things don't matter. You need to survive. And so we need to probably go through our lives when we're in this storm and start wondering if there's some stuff that shouldn't be uh, thrown overboard. Some stuff that's weighing us down. Maybe it's sinful. Maybe it's not even sinful. Maybe it's just a time waster. Maybe it's something that's just sucking up time and effort and energy. And we need to be like, no, we don't have any room left in this storm. We got to toss some stuff overboard. or Otherwise, we're going to sink. And that goes against what we're told by society. Society tells us, have as many things as you can have. Have as nice of things as you can have. Go into levels and levels and levels of debt. That's how everybody does it. And have as much as you can. And that's what success really looks like. But the problem is those worldly things will never fill the Jesus-shaped hole in our hearts. It never does. It never does. There's a Jesus-shaped hole in all of our hearts. And you can all those things can throw it in there and it doesn't. It doesn't matter one bit. Only thing that matters is that Jesus is in the Jesus-shaped hole in our hearts. The enemy wants to get us so busy with so many things that we don't have time for God and that we don't have time for the things that really matter. And it's easy to find ourselves too busy to pray, too busy to read our Bibles, too busy to uh, go to church. We're just now too busy. But listen, 
Doesn't God have a plan for every one of our days? Today, right here today. Doesn't God have a plan for your day today? Yeah. He, he has things that, that he needs you to do and that you need to do. And our, those calendars need to mesh because God would not create a day for you today. He would not create a day that didn't have him in it. If he wants you to spend time with him in prayer and Bible study and, and, and church and getting that in your life, surely he would have time built into you, the day to do that. And so if we don't have time for those things in our day, we are proving that our calendar and Jesus' calendars don't line up. That there's some stuff that needs to be thrown overboard. So that's what time. It's time to throw some stuff overboard. It's time to lighten the boat a bit. And it's time for all, all of us to throw some time stealers overboard. Throw some things that are sucking up energy and sucking up money and sucking up resources why? Because in the storms of life, we've got to focus on making it through. And those other things, uh, they might be uh, things that are not necessarily helpful. Because all we really need to do in these storms is hold on to Jesus. And if, they're taking, if things are taken away, our ability to hold on to Jesus, we need to toss them over. Our next slide, we can be doing exactly what Jesus says and still find ourselves in a storm. Mark 6.45, which is the same story in the book of Mark, Jesus insisted that his disciples get back into the boat and head across the lake to Bethsaida. Jesus insisted. Jesus told them, get in the boat and head out there. And sometimes we think that the storms of life come because we've done something wrong. What have we done? Now we'll talk about that in a second, but sometimes the storms happen because you did something right. And there's really about three different reasons why storms, the storms of life, happen okay the first one is the enemy's trying to stop you you're on the right path you're following god and the devil and his demons are not going to just stand back and watch you obey god and watch you make an impact into other people's lives it's not going to do it so the enemy tries to stop you number two there's unwise decisions that we've made and the consequences the effects of those decisions are now happening in in our lives so sometimes there is an unwise decision. And the last one is it's a broken world. We live in a world, theologically, since Genesis chapter 2 and 3, the fall of man, we live in a broken world whose God, small g, is Satan. And so this broken world, at the, at the end of the book of Revelations, at the end of the last days, Jesus comes and restores all things, and it won't be this way anymore. But right now, we live in a very troubled, broken world. That's why sometimes... It's easy to blame God in the middle of our storms, but don't do that. Don't go down that road. Because we, we, we must never allow the presence of a storm to cause us to doubt the presence of Jesus. Never. So yes, you can be doing the right thing and a storm comes. You could be doing, you could have done something a while back and now the effects of it. Who, you listen, don't go down that road. This is really what I want to kind of end this point with. It's natural to wonder why you're in the situation you're in. But now is not the time, in the middle of the storm, it's not the time to question all those things and let all those thoughts roll through your mind about what you're doing, how you're doing, and all that stuff. We can get to that maybe afterwards. Maybe when you're on the backside of the storm, you can look back and, and maybe with wisdom see if there was something you could have changed. But when you're in the middle of the storm, you got to stay focused on holding the hand of Jesus and going the direction he says to go. Don't worry about that other stuff right now. You just make it through this storm. And then at the end of the storm, look back maybe and go, okay, what happened here? But I tell you, now's not the time in the middle of your storm to ask all these questions. It just takes up important mental and, and soul space that you don't have to, uh, the place to give up at this time. In 2017, there was a situation that I found myself in. Our whole church found itself in. There was a false prophet in our church someone I had known for a very, very long time. And this false prophet began to hear voices that I don't believe were from God. And uh, I believe they were not God's voice. And this person believed that what they were hearing was from God, even though the Bible says that New Testament prophecy should encourage and build up, never tear down. Well, this one was a very painful uh, group of uh, false prophecies that this person had. And sadly, they took this false prophecy 
and they sent it to over 200 families at Church of the Heartland. Anybody they had a Facebook messenger or an email, anybody they had the, an email address for, and they took, uh, they took and they tried to share this false prophecy as much as they possibly could. And in the middle of this false prophecy, it said some very horrible things. That I was evil, Heath Hyatt was evil, that God was going to destroy Church of the Heartland, that if you were anywhere near me when this destruction comes, if you were still a part of this church, if you were still connected to this church, you were going to be destroyed. And that's just not what God uh, says, and that's not the truth. And clearly, this really bothered me. Not only did this person not say this to my face, this person said it to as many people as possible and, and tried to do as much damage as possible. And um, thankfully, out of those 200 people that this false prophecy was sent to, uh, very few of them uh, believed it was from God. Most of them, with the right spirit in their heart, realized this is not from the Lord, and this is not how the Holy Spirit sounds, and this is not from the Holy Spirit. And sadly, for two more years, they continued to send out, just about once a month, some kind of uh, thing along those same lines, um, and it was just very, very painful. And it kept, for me, making it very difficult for me to forgive. And so I had to forgive on a daily basis, and I I tell you, I was walking with Jesus, <laughs> and I can honestly say Jesus held my hand through this storm like never before. He really did. I also did a few things where I had some mentors around me and the pastors of Church of the Heartland, and I didn't make any major decisions because my brain was scrambled. I was so hurt and so wounded and so saddened and so upset. It was just so troubling to me. I couldn't really see clearly, and they helped me, and they, they, they gave me advice, and it was just such a, a, a beautiful time of immense storm, yet holding Jesus' hand and having those other people help me hold Jesus' hand. And so Jesus did reassure me in this moment, in these moments about my calling, about what I'm called to do, that he loved me, that my heart was, was pure, that I wasn't evil. I mean, I'm not perfect. I'm not the perfect person or the perfect leader, but I'm not evil. And that he was there for me in the middle of all of that storm. And I look back at that moment now, even though it was a terrible storm that I went through, I look back at it with a certain amount of fondness, actually, thinking, wow, Jesus, look what you did. Look how you helped me, even in the middle of something so very painful. So our next slide, the choice is between faith or fear when we're in a storm. Jesus, he, Jesus, called out to them, don't be afraid, I am here. What a terrific verse. Don't be afraid. I am here. And a choice is for you and I, whether we're going to walk by faith and say, I trust you, Jesus, or we're going to walk in fear because the storm clouds are dark and the wind is blowing and you can feel it. And you can, you know, storms have that ionized air. You can sense the danger in the air and it's real. And so we have these feelings and we got to get past the feelings. See, we walk by faith, not by sight, right? Sight's one of those five senses right? You can feel, you can touch, you can smell. So we walk by faith, not by what we can feel, not by what we can see, not by what we can hear. We walk by faith. We decide to trust Jesus in the middle of our storms. Fear never helps the situation. You, they don't teach first responders to go up on a situation and be as afraid as possible and start freaking out. No, they teach them, don't overreact, chill out, be in a state of uh, clear-mindedness. So fear is not helpful. Faith is helpful. Trusting God is helpful. In this verse, Jesus gives us not only the, the thing to not be, don't fear, right? He also tells us why we shouldn't fear, and it's because he's there. It's because Jesus is right there. He's right beside you. He's right with you. So we're going to make the decision to reject fear and embrace faith. Reject all the things that we see in the dark clouds and say, no, 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 I, I, I see that, that is true, but yet I'm trusting Jesus, and I'm holding the hand of Jesus, and he's going to make it all okay, and I've made a choice, I've, I've made a decision that I'm going to hold the hand of Jesus through every wind and every wave. See, God uses our storms so we can help others in their storms. God sometimes uses our storms so we can help other people. So, this situations we find ourselves in can build a testimony because we can go, hey, you know what? I, I need that. I need that. I, I'm in a storm myself, and I see how you went through your storm holding the hand of Jesus, and now I can go through my storm because I, I've got your example 
of how to go through this. So we, we grow in these storms many times. We come through on the other side and hold in hand the, the hand of Jesus, and we can share that with other people, that our storm has now a purpose, and it's, it's, it's got a point, and we can now use it to help other people who are in the storm of their own life. Testimonies are powerful, and God's building a testimony inside your heart. He's building a testimony in the storm you're in right now. If we hold the hand of Jesus, you're going to have a beautiful testimony when this is over. And other people can be helped from that testimony. Now, speaking of testimonies, here we're about to see a video here called uh, In the Eye of the Storm. But it's a Christian songwriter that took what he was going through and turned it into a song. So check this out. So, you know, I lost my mom a few years ago from bone cancer. And, and I'm the baby of our family. I'm the only son. Mm. So my mom and I were real tight. And I just, I wasn't ready for that. And um, I was the one that kind of had to deal with her and, and take her to the hospital and hospice and all that because my dad just wasn't capable of doing it. And right after that, kind of on the heels of that, my wife and I went through this crazy um, miscarriage of our twins. Um, our church that we were a part of, it was like our family was splitting and dividing. And it was like mm -hmm. all these people on this side of the room hated everybody over here. And there was all oh this gossip and division and it was all just so ugly and it felt like a death. And like, I was, I was released from my record company that time I got dropped and I felt like nobody wanted anything to do with me. And, and then I had friends calling me all the time saying that their kids were addicted to methamphetamines and Ryan, can you help us? And it was just this season of chaos and I just could not handle a single more thing. I just, mm -hmm. I just was crying out to the Lord. I can't, I can't do it. You yeah. have to, you have to take this Lord. And so, you know, my, my, my record label guy, my A&R guy came to me and said, why don't you just take this last song? Don't write anything for radio. Just write something for you. Write whatever you want to say. And so I did. So we literally, Eye of the Storm was the anti-radio song. <laughs> and, How crazy is and, that? And uh, I, just, I just wanted to talk about the things that people actually go through, the things that make us all human, but always point people to the hope giver and the healer, the the anchor, the strong point in the middle of every single trial and storm of our life is always Jesus. And he does not overlook the details. He, he never stops paying attention to what we're going through because he's in it with us. Mm -hmm. He's already climbed right into that boat and he stands there. And that's just, those are the things that I'm learning as I go through my storms is that I'm not alone. Jesus is right in there with me and he feels what I feel. He knows what I know. He sees what I see. And yet he's not shocked or confused or freaking out. He's just standing there with me, holding me. And that's, that's for everybody. And so when the solid ground is falling now from underneath my feet between the black skies and my red eyes i can barely see and when i'm feeling like i've been let down by my friends and my family i can hear the rain reminding me in the eye of the storm you remain in control in the middle of the world surrounds me in the eye of the storm mm -hmm. when my hopes and dreams are far from me and i'm running out of faith i see the future i picture slowly fade away and when the tears of pain and heartache are pouring down my face find my peace in Jesus name in the eye of the storm you remain in control in the middle of the war you guard my soul you alone are the anchor when my sails are torn your love surrounds me
I just don't know how I'm gonna make ends meet. I did my best, now I'm scared to death that we might lose everything. And when a sickness takes my child away and there's nothing I can do, my only hope is to trust you. I trust you, Lord, in the eye of the storm. You remain in control. In the middle of the war, you guard my soul. You alone are the anchor. When my sails are torn, your love surrounds me. In the eye of the storm, you remain in control. In the middle of the war, you guard my soul. You alone are the anchor. When my sails are torn, your love surrounds me in the eye of the storm. Now, if you're feeling like you're in the eye of the storm right now today, don't quit. Don't stop. Keep pushing through. Jesus is going to hold your hand through every single situation. It's, it's going to be okay. Choose faith, reject fear, and hold his hand. And I'll tell you, it might not turn out the exact way you wanted it to, but it will be okay. And Jesus will make sure that you arrive on the shores safely. The storm you're going through right now has the power to be a tremendous testimony for you and build your faith knowing that God took you through all these things and build the faith of somebody else who's looking at our lives and saying, man, they trusted Jesus in such a hard time. So how do we apply this to our lives? First, make sure Jesus is in your boat and in the captain's seat. In your boat, in the captain's seat. Man, that is so critical. Don't go your own way. Don't make your own decisions. Put Jesus in the boat, know Jesus, and make sure he's in the captain's seat. Make sure he's the one calling the shots. That we're not just out there making decisions and running into stuff and then hoping for the best afterwards. No, listen to his leadership in the middle of the storm. And number two, use your storm experiences to help others. And the storm experiences that you're going through right now can build a testimony to help other people. Share your testimony. Tell them what you're going through. Be honest, be open. Tell them how hard it's been, but yet you've been holding the hand of Jesus. And I tell you what, it's going to make a powerful, uh, a powerful impact into other people's lives. Let's pray right now if we could. Lord, we pray right now for all those going through a storm right here. Jesus, be with them. Hold their hands. You're coming out to their boat right now, Lord. You're walking on water. You're miraculously making sure you're arriving at that boat, that storm right here, right now to make everything okay. And Jesus, right now, we're putting you in our boat. (laughs) Here you go. Take the captain's seat. We're praying that right now. Take the captain's seat of our life, Lord. Lead us where you want us to go, what you want us to do. We will obey, Lord Jesus. And I pray, Lord, that somehow you take this storm that we found ourselves in and and create a testimony so that other people, Jesus, can be used. Help us to be near to you in this time. Near to you like never before. In Jesus' name, amen.